uh, gifts for a brunch. Um, uh, etiquette for guests invited to a bride-to-be brunch. What is the etiquette for guests giving gifts for an invitation that was specified as a bridal brunch? Uh, that's a good question. I think um, that basically if it's a if it's a party it, it's a brunch instead of a shower or that sort of thing so a gift would be appropriate um, for the hostess um, okay. and it would also be appropriate for the bride I think it's always nice to take a hostess gift but if you take a present if, if you take a gift for the bride it would be along the lines of a shower and I, I always think that if um, I mean it would make sense to me I don't go to a lot of bridal um, brunches but <clears throat> if I were invited I would take a gift that had something to do with food because oh, okay. it's sort of on the theme of brunch yes. and so um, uh, oh I don't know maybe a nice glass pitcher to mix Bloody Marys in or something you know I mean you can think of things to do the gift though I think <clears throat> the, probably the the underlying question here is do we have to give a gift yes and um, the significance of the gift should, it's not a substitute for a wedding present. So if you, if you give a, a, it's like a shower gift. If you take a gift to a shower, it doesn't mean you're off the hook for the wedding. Okay. Um, but it would be, um, it would be, these kinds of gifts tend to be, um, I think, themed toward uh, something more for the bride. Yes. And something that she could use to produce a brunch or or like in in the in the in the uh, instance of a shower, it would be something to take care of your of your baby if it's a baby shower. If it's a bridal shower, it would have something to do with taking care of your house. Usually, setting yes. up housekeeping. Yeah. Yes. A wedding present <clears throat> would not be um, well today. A wedding present would be more geared towards something that the bride and groom might use together. Okay. In the old days it was <clears throat> wedding presents were kind of a replacement for a dowry chest where you would have your sheets and your cutlery and your glasses and dishes and all that kind of stuff. So that's what traditional <clears throat> wedding presents are. But we're we're kind of moving a little bit away from that today because people don't go to the local um, jewelry shop to pick out their silver pattern. It just, it isn't happening. And so wedding presents tend to be more something, well, they, they would like this. And, but <clears throat> in this case, this would be for her, and it would be for, I think, should be something that she could use to, you know, in the same vein as, as a brunch. Okay. And uh, monetary value, does it... It simply is based on your your capability. I yes, I think that that's the case. I don't think <clears throat> in the when you're when you're going to a party, there are going to be other people there. You don't want to stick out. Okay. So if you're a millionaire <clears throat> and you're going to a party, you don't have to spend a million dollars on the gift. In fact, you shouldn't. Um, I always think that it's. Uh, I think for those kinds of gifts in the twenty-five dollar range, you're you're doing fine. And for wedding presents. What, whatever you can afford, because wedding presents are not at a party. That's right. So if you have a, a rich uncle who wants to give you a $500 vacuum cleaner, that would be fine. But if he was to show up or your, his wife was to show up at a bridal shower with a $500 vacuum cleaner, mm -hmm. it would take the attention away from the bride. From the bride. And it would be, it would really, it would look really wrong. Inappropriate. Yeah. All right. <laughs>